Lord, how are you doing? First of all, I'd like to thank the HCCA for giving me the opportunity to come speak to you today. Uh, we've got a great crowd here. Um, basically, I'm just going to give some highlights of what's going on in the U.S. You know, Jack and I were talking earlier. He said, could you address some of the drought issues? And to talk about the drought, we want to have to talk about one thing, and that's the corn market. So we're just going to give you a little... Number one, this is my first disclaimer. I work for a publicly traded company in the U.S. What I'm about to tell you are my opinions. You cannot sue my company because you don't like what I said. That's my first thing. But second of all, I need a risk management consultant. So what is that? I'm a broker. So people always ask me, what is a broker? You know, I can give them some, you know, you know smart ass you want to say, you know, I'm as long as gamma, I'm, I'm short beta or something like that. But this slide I came across to a couple of, about, a, about two months ago. I don't think it really sums up what a broker is, okay? Number one, society thinks we're evil. We're the terrible people in the world, which we create all the problems. This is what my mom thinks I am. Very studious, very learned person. The people I compete against think I'm this guy. I'm a monkey with a keyboard and can make money. This is what my back office thinks I do. I make a lot of messes that they have to clean up. I think so, too. I think I'm a rock star, okay? But in reality, I'm just a caricature behind a keyboard and a screen. We live in interesting times. I was with Judge Ford earlier, and, uh, you know, my view of the market is pretty long-term. You know, I, I trade short-term. I trade physical. I, I broker futures with my clients. But I'm big that... Especially these markets today, you have to really take a long, hard view of the market. Start out with this is my shameless plug for my company. Um, I started with this company 26 years ago. I got it done at Kansas City office. You can see that we have a global presence in almost all the commodity markets. And that's, that's my shameless plug. Start out with when you look at corn production in the U.S., this has been the focus of the drought, and I think that's what's been driving the market not only in wheat and corn. But to a point in soybeans. I thought this was a good slide to start with. This is the corn belt area of the U.S. This is what we're in. Most of the corn is grown and harvested. This is what happened this year. This is the U.S. drought monitor. It's uh, uh, about two weeks old. But you can see where the hardest bit part of the, 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 the harbor was, was in the corn belt here. Now, this is the wheat areas down here. So it's something we've got to think about going into the future. But what I'm concerned about is we need a wet winter this year to either recharge the subsoil and charge up the ground, uh, the topsoil. We're seeing some moisture right now in the corn belt. Um, I was thinking of some good rains. We have had very good rains in part of the wheat area. Oklahoma, Texas got some nice rains. The wheat crop has an opportunity to come up. But what's interesting, even right now where it's real dry, it's right through here. Montana, the Dakotas, uh, and then one chance of spring we find in later. But right now, this is the focus. We need more moisture to get ready for the corn crop for next year. This is a, a chart of just where Chicago futures have been for the last five years. Jack did a really good job of kind of going over the, the big picture of the market. So I'm not going to get too deep in that. But this is just a monthly chart of futures. And the average over the last five years is about 525. You see we spiked up to around 850 early in the year. But what people forget is where the market was at before. And I like to look at the market as, as what I call percentages. You can see the top 10% of the market, bottom 10%. Markets always go to the extreme and revert to the mean, right? So production, supply, demand, market. Okay, what makes it work? You can see right now we're pulling back. Now the last three days we've seen a uh, pretty good sell-off in the market, all the markets. And I want to talk just briefly about Dodd-Frank. I'm not going to get too into it, but I think you guys need to understand it. If you don't understand it, you know what's going on, go home and Google it. Dodd-Frank is legislation that the U.S. is enacting in the futures and security markets. It's going to have a lot of effect on the futures market. And I can't tell if it's true, but we've had a few emails in our shop the last couple of days talking about this liquidation of the market. People believe a lot of that is people getting out of the market because as Bob Frank is enacted, they just 
We just learned this new swap market is a lot of people that trade swaps as an OTC only account. Okay. Now listen, regulation coming, legislature, regulation coming. You bring up the other swap position. Okay. We're going to have to be capitalizing it. You know, we're going to have to margin both sides of the trade when it's maybe not so happy. So that may be part of the sell off here the last few years. Like I said, I don't want to really talk about Dodd Frank. I think it's going to increase everybody's cost whether you're in the U.S. or in the U.K. So I would highly recommend you get your mutual funds. So this is the, the Fed of Anchorage in the U.S. on corn. What makes this drive up like this? If you go back to 2006, this was the first real year that the ethanol program ex exerted its power on the market. You can see Anchorage has increased every year. Fact is, this year we had our, our record planting on corn acres. But what happened this year with the drought? Right now we're looking at corn production below total demand, so that difference comes out of ending stocks. Right now the USDA has yield about 126.8 bushel per acre. The harvest of acres about 87.4 acres. So not very good with that, that yield. So I got an issue with the harvest of acres on the end of that yield curve. So we've got high prices. What do we have to do? We have to ration the usage of U.S. corn. Right now, the rationing demand is exports. I think uh, exports are way down, um, mainly because people are sourcing cheaper corn out of Argentina or Brazil, or they're using something else. A lot of feed we didn't use last year. I still think we're going to see a lot of those this year. So when you talk about ethanol, when you look at ethanol, I like to look at it as a percentage of the use of the crop. So last year we used 40.6 of our corn crop, and that's 5 billion bushels of ethanol. This year we're going to use about 4.5 uh, billion bushels. So that's actually a higher percentage of usage because the crop's higher. Now, People talk about the EPA coming and changing the game on the mandate and how much ethanol is going to be produced in the U.S. The problem is, even if the EPA came in a way with the best ethanol mandate today, it's not a silver bullet. What I mean by that is, ethanol gets so integrated into our, our gasoline supply, economics will be the issue that drives it. Basically, without the Another oxygenate, we need to use ethanol in our gasoline. That's what talks is going to be an issue in parts of the eastern corn market. Now, this will show up a little later in the market, but basically, the harvest was at such there was a lot of disease, a lot of aflatoxin, especially in eastern corn belt. So, an ethanol plant cannot use corn that's uh, over 10 parts per billion out of aflatoxin because what happens is it'll concentrate in the human genes. We can't sell those human genes any further to the feed market. So that's going to become a premium issue later in the year. So what this is, this is a chart of the ethanol crush. This is dollars per gallon. You can track this. What it is, it takes the two inputs. It takes corn price. It takes natural gas price. You've got ethanol out and co-product out, BDG. You can crush that. Now, this has no basis in it. Simply using financial futures, corn futures, not gas futures, ethanol futures out, and a, a BDG price that's close to zero. As you can see, these guys have been pretty ready for a long time. The ethanol industry today is a lot different than it was three or five years ago. I always tell people, you know, go to an ethanol plant, it's like going to a pub. There's a third guy that owns that pub, he's going to make a lot of money. But the first two guys pay for it. The ethanol industry in the U.S. is actually pretty well uh, positioned from a capital uh, perspective, and who owns that? That's why Big Oil owns a lot of the ethanol production now, because they know they need that oxygenate. So the industry may shut down or it may slow down, but it's not going to go away until we have either a complete disaster where there's no corn to use or economics drive it up. This is shows weekly ethanol production. Um, this is my favorite part of this slide right here. This is December 
this is ethanol production. At the end of December, the government took off the uh, ethanol blending credit for 22 cents a gallon. So what's everybody going to do before the credit goes off? They're going to push as much ethanol out as they can. So ethanol really went up just as stocks. And you can see as we got into higher corn prices, higher basis values, the market really cratered out. Ethanol production is rebounding a little bit, but stocks are staying staying pretty high. Better the time to really get into exports of ethanol than last year. Exports really drove the economics of our ethanol market. We were exporting a lot of ethanol. My favorite trade last year, I, I know the guy who did it to me. He sold a boat of Brazilian ethanol to the west coast of the U.S. Bought the boat back, delivered it at the Gulf, took it right back down to Brazil. That's how the ethanol trade works. We didn't typically import a lot of ethanol from the seasonal parts of the state of time to the West Coast. What drives ethanol economics? I mean, for us, in our shop, it's pretty simple. We look at gasoline futures, which would be our tarball gasoline futures. These are ethanol futures. As long as ethanol futures trade at a discount, the gasoline can work. Uh, our, ethanol, our, our ethanol guys tell me we need to get ethanol about 35 to 40 cents a gallon or above gasoline to cut off the production. This is a chart of the forward curve of that same uh, gasoline minus ethanol. You can see even for out of the new crop, we're still trading at a 30 to 35 cent a gallon discount. Now part of that is these 13 core futures are a lot cheaper because we're anticipating buying a little cheaper cash grain, but it really never gets above 25 cent discount. EDTs, this is what's really allowing these ethanol plants to uh, maybe not make money, but break even with the um, shorter corn crop. We've seen a lot more dry distillers grains used into our feed sector. Uh, I've got uh, feed, feed yards, I feed lot, cattle feed lots I trade with. They're using all DDGs, a little bit of wheat, and a few other things. Not any DDG in the corn at all. We figure. One ton of DDGs replaces one and a quarter tons of corn because of that, that energy yield component of the corn DDG. But you can see how DDG our production's expanded. We have been exporting quite a bit. Um, China likes DDGs. You know, I know people that are exporting DDGs right now to China in, in uh, containers. I think that's kind of bashing, but you know they're doing it. So I think you'll see more and more DDGs exports to China. Right now, the biggest uh, in our markets, the livestock guy is really taking it. And you can see the amount of corn that has been reduced in the feed ration. And um, what we were talking about last night, steak's going to get awful expensive in about six to eight months once this cycle of cattle goes through right now. You can see this is a makeup of the livestock sector in the U.S. These are the grain consuming animal units that the USDA publishes. Our third poultry, about 28% uh, hogs, 23% cattle, dairy, and others. But right now, the cattle guy is really taking the industry. This 